Eiji Aonuma is an absolute dog. And like many of the bad arses out there, he has hardcore Zelda fans literally crapping their pants in disbelief and disgust. So go ahead and put your depends on tightly as we get ready to take a more serious dive into what all this Zelda drama is really about. Well, after you hit the subscribe button, of course, you see we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers, which is pretty awesome, right? At least for me. And if you stick around to the end of the video, we have a pretty sweet giveaway for you guys for a $10 eShop gift card. But again, details on how to enter, at the end of the video. Tears of the Kingdom is showing itself to be a bit divisive among hardcore longtime Zelda fans for many reasons. Being a direct sequel, taking place in the exact same world, it's not really that uncommon in the video game industry, but it is uncommon for the Zelda series, having never truly done this before. Well, at least not in back-to-back -back releases. Yes, I'm aware of A Link Between Worlds and that it takes place in the same world as A Link to the Past, Calm down, Zelda lore experts. I didn't forget that little nugget of Zelda history. Now that the game has been out for a little while, a common criticism lobbied by quote-unquote Nintendo haters before release that its glorified $70 DLC is echoed by some of the most faithful Nintendo uh, Zelda fans. Sure, they may not go as far as to say those exact words today, that would be a bit too insulting even for Zelda fans to say about the makers of the game. But really, talking about recycled world graphics, mechanics, characters, and other things spliced in with new stuff isn't the point of this video. If you want to find some Zelda fans being hypercritical of such stuff, you can check out the likes of Bandit Games, who has self-proclaimed he won't really be making content around Tears of the Kingdom anymore as a Zelda theorist due to not only his criticism of the game overall, which he has a three-part video series on these criticisms, and we'll link them down below, but also in particular because of the story. He also argues against my long-held belief that they've never really cared about the timeline itself, which is fine. These are all opinions. But it's everything happening in the wake of Tears of the Kingdom that's causing a true stir, in particular with series producer and final decision maker, Eiji Aonuma, and the things he has been saying lately in various interviews. Some of the stuff is music to the ears of folks that aren't that into Tears of the Kingdom. As an example, he practically guaranteed they would never return to the world of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, most especially in the very next game, and they would leave behind mechanics, even loved ones like Ultra Hand, to that world. This made many happy who weren't satisfied with the direction of Tears of the Kingdom, just knowing that whatever is next is going to be a new, fresh Zelda experience all over again. As a Zelda fan myself, I admit this sounds great. Tears of the Kingdom is my favorite game of all time, but I love how unique the Zelda series is, where most of the entries in the series are a new world. Even if they decide to call that world Hyrule and have similar locations, those locations just quite literally don't look or feel like the same location in prior games. It has that familiar feeling, but fresh almost every time. So this is largely a good thing that we're moving on to something new again. It's also exciting as it leaves everything unknown. But one particular thing Aonuma said has hardcore Zelda fans pretty upset. Arlo is a nice example here where his literal thumbnail to his video gives the general sentiment without even watching. Reportedly, A.G. Aonuma stated, freedom and openness is good, but linear games are bad. In fact, the quote most often used comes from this IGN interview, and here it is. The near games are games of the past. That sounds pretty harsh on the surface, but let's give you the full context of the actual quotes. You see, this interview was originally conducted in Japan, so we should go off the original text from IGN Japan. Japanese to English translation is more of an art sense it doesn't really translate perfectly but this translation by almatonmedia.com gives a more clear understanding of what Eiji Anuma meant in full context so here's what he said games where you need to follow a specific set of steps or complete task in a very set order 
are kind of the games of the past. This was then followed by the interviewer asking Eiji Anuma about fans' nostalgia and how they can apply that to the current design. He said this, I think our psychology makes us want what we don't have anymore. And of course, I too feel some nostalgia for this past tendency of Zelda games. Now, notably, he also says he feels there's more linearity in Tears of the Kingdom already, as there is a set path, it's just one the player has to discover for themselves. So, he didn't really say that linear games are games of the past, but rather that the idea of linearity in general is something that exists in prior games, as he was agreeing with Fujibayashi, who previously in that same interview said they wanted to make games where the players don't feel like they can't do something just because we don't want them to, and notes that a player can go right to the ending sections of the game anytime they want, but without knowing where that is or how to get there, it's designed for them not to really notice it. Hence, they try to guide you to where they would like you to go. But if you find out for yourself, you're more than welcome to go right to the end. There is no can't. There's just, we won't tell you how right now. Hardcore fans are still, nonetheless, even with a corrected quote, pretty upset by this, because their biggest criticism of both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are essentially the dungeons and the story, two things they feel the linear style of Zelda games in the past just did a lot better. Of course, this is still just opinions and totally subjective, but hearing that they do not at all want to use these aspects again makes them worried. The irony, of course, is Tears of the Kingdom should actually be a nice reminder that the concerns are maybe overblown. People enjoyed the dungeon puzzle designs of the Divine Beast, but they didn't like that the aesthetic was the same and that the boss fights felt very samey as well. So, taking that feedback in mind when making Tears of the Kingdom, the five dungeons are all themed and they all have their own designs and yes, extremely varied boss fights. So they listened. They didn't necessarily bring everything back from the old games, but they made steps. Steps they felt made sense within their design goals. As Nintendo moves forward to a new Zelda game, some four to five years from now, long time, with a new world and new possibilities and designs, I think it's obvious they will continue to evolve what the dungeons are. I also think they will change how the story unfolds. The last two games relied heavily on memories, but like mechanics such as Ultra Hand, I think that style of storytelling will also stay behind with these games, as they find new ways to engage the player and evolve Zelda even more. They definitely do not seem like the kind of developers today that are going to look at all these things as barriers and requirements. Will climbing be something that returns? Probably. But I have a feeling an entirely new art direction, a world that feels fresh, a brand new story, maybe an increase from five to eight dungeons with completely fresh designs, and more is in store for us the next time around in a sprawling open world that looks crazier and even more insane than ever before. The Zelda team knows how to push Nintendo's systems to their limits for their creative vision, and they will assuredly do this again on the Nintendo Switch 2. I understand the concerns of the hardcore faithful, but I also think we need to give the people entrusted with the series a little faith. Tears of the Kingdom was like Breath of the Wild in many ways, and it should have been. The next one, besides being an open world, it's a complete mystery. They won't even start revealing those secrets just yet. Now, I did say, wait until the end, you amazing Zelda. I mean, well, prime family, friends, right? We're all family here. So if you're subscribed and want to win a sweet $10 eShop gift card, again, have to be subscribed. I want you to go ahead in the comments below and tell us about your favorite video game memory, but it must include the following two words. That's right, folks, we're gonna hit up word of the day. So the first word of the day we have comes from Merriam Webster. That word is purview. Now look, we don't always like that Webster fellow, so we're also going to have to use a second word, this one coming from the word of the day over at dictionary.com. Cromulent. Now enjoy your holiday weekend, and hey, we'll announce the winner of this 
either if not before Christmas on Christmas you know I got a lot of stuff going on but we'll get those winners announced out there you guys are awesome Merry Christmas happy holidays happy Hanukkah Kwanzaa Festivus whatever you celebrate and if you don't celebrate at all just tell the people around you that you love that you love them it's just that time of year